I just discovered a secret prompting technique for VO3, and it gives you insane control over your AI video generation. It's something I call visual prompting. So what does that actually mean? Instead of just writing a text prompt, you can literally draw, scribble, or mark up an input image, and VO3 will animate exactly what you've outlined. Sounds interesting, right? But the real question is, does this actually give you more power than regular text prompting? Today, we're going to dive deep and find out. So, there are mainly two ways you can use Google VO3. The first is through the Gemini app, and the second is inside Google Flow, which Google calls an AI filmmaking tool. Now, to actually use the VO3 model, you're going to need either the Google AI Pro or Ultra subscription. The good news? Google's offering a one-month free trial for the Pro plan. And if you're a student, there's even better news. In many countries, you can get a whole year free. You'll just have to check if that offer's available where you live. All right, so I'm now on Google Flow, and here you can select the model. We have VO3 Fast, which takes 20 credits per generation, and VO3 Quality, which takes 100 credits. I mostly prefer VO3 Fast because it's about 80% cheaper, and honestly, I didn't notice any big difference in quality between the two. Next, you can choose between text to video and frames to video. For this tutorial, we're sticking with frames to video. All right, now I'll show you how you can write a prompt on an image. For that, you can use Canva, Adobe Express, or if you have Photoshop, you can use that too. So I'm using Photoshop for this one. Here's the image we'll be working on. Let's start with something simple. For the first action, I'll write, a purple cosmic circular glowing portal with a galaxy inside smoothly opens here. And I'll place this text on the right side. You can also add arrows for more precision. For the second action, I'll write, she slowly walks toward the portal, drawn by curiosity. And that's it for Photoshop. Now let's export the image. After exporting the image, head over to Google Flow, make sure to select Frames to Video, then click here and upload the image. In the prompt bar, we'll write, immediately delete instructions on the first frame and execute in order. This is the base prompt, and you'll always want to use it if you're going with visual prompting. So let's hit Generate and see the result. Overall, that's pretty good. We got everything I asked for, and in the exact order, I asked for it. Now, one small downside of this method is that the first two to three seconds of your video are spent animating the fade out of the markings. But after that, you get everything you wrote in the image. And here is another example of this technique, and this one is a bit complex. So in this image, we have a soldier seen from behind, standing in the middle of what looks like a war-torn street, kind of like a post-battle atmosphere. For the first action, I wrote for the camera to zoom out. Then I wanted a tank to drive in from here, fire at the building, which causes a massive explosion on this particular building. Finally, the soldier runs toward the building. So that's a total of four actions. And when I ran this image through VEO3, this is what I got. Okay, so overall, I liked what VO3 did here. We got most of the actions we asked for. However, I had asked for the tank to drive into the scene from this side. But in this result, the tank was already there. It also completely missed the first action, which was the camera zooming out. The soldier started running right from the start. Sometimes when you ask for multiple things to happen at once, VO3 might skip a few of your prompts, but that's not always the case. I found this example on X from Scenario, where it handled all the actions really well. So as you can see, we once again have four actions, and you can use these boxes and scribbles too if you want. Here, the actions are accurate and follow the right sequence, making this a solid example of how well this approach can work. Visual prompting is great if you have multiple people in your image and want each of them to do something specific. In this image, we have three men. For the first one, I prompted him to pull out his phone from his pocket and start scrolling casually with one hand. For the second man, I wanted him to adjust his cufflinks and glance around. And finally, an explosion erupts in the building in the background. And here's what I got. So yeah, we pretty much got everything we asked for. These two guys followed their prompts and the third guy didn't copy them, which was great. Like I said, if you have multiple people in your image, you can assign one task to each person and that's something that's really hard to do with just text-based prompting. VO3 is also great at understanding movement directions. 
If you add arrows or scribbles to show which way you want something to move, the subject will follow that direction in your video. Check out these examples from Jared Liu on X. You can also change backgrounds and videos. If your subject has a green or any solid color background, you can use this trick. So I had this image of a man walking on a green screen, and I wanted to see this other image as the background. I placed it in this corner and didn't scale it down too much so VO3 could clearly recognize it. For the prompt, I used a simple one, though you can make it more precise if you want. And finally, I kept both of them inside a box. When I ran this through VO3, I got this result. And yeah, I was really amazed by this one. Now let's check out another example. Here, I have an image of a futuristic soldier with a green screen, and another image I wanted as the background. So I placed that background image inside a box, and for the prompt I wrote, green screen view suddenly gets replaced with this image. And here's what I got. The background isn't 100% identical, but it's about 80 to 90% similar. It did change the soldier's position slightly, but his appearance stayed the same, which is really great. I ran this same image four times, and these are all four results. In three of them, I got very satisfying cinematic outcomes. But in one of the results, a green tint stayed on the soldier, making the colors look a bit off. But aside from that, all the results turned out really well. Here's another similar example. I had a green screen in this frame with a woman looking at it. I added a background image and a prompt to replace the green screen with that image. These are the results I got. Pretty impressive, right? You can get even better results if you use more detailed prompts, like specifying exactly how you want the replacement to appear. I also tried this technique on another image where there wasn't a solid color area to replace, just a window, and I wanted my image to appear as the view through that window. But after multiple attempts with different prompts, I couldn't get satisfying results. So I believe this method works best when your image has a solid color area to replace. Now, there's another thing you should know. This technique doesn't work well with dialogue. I tried adding dialogue to the image along with expressions, but in the video they ended up saying random things, not what I wrote in the prompt. Oh, do you now? I tried multiple times with different prompts and images, but none of the videos came out with the correct dialogue. We need to discuss the terms of this new arrangement. I'm listening, but my terms are firm. So those were all the tests I did with this new prompting technique. By now, you should have a good idea of how useful it can be. I'd recommend experimenting on your own to discover even better possibilities. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.